Delvin Jones lives near Chicago. He's almost completely blind. But there's nothing wrong with his corneas. They're not in no hurry. Easy. The front of Delvin's eyes are perfectly healthy. The corneas and the lenses work fine. But at the back of Delvin's eyes are the retinas, incredibly complex layers of cells which convert light into electrical signals and send them to the brain for processing into a sensation we call sight. Find the door. Where's the door? Delvin's retinas have broken down. He gets around with his seeing eye dog, Bud. They take this trip every day. Hello there, Delvin. How are you doing, Bud? Delvin. Delvin Jones started going blind 20 years ago. He has an hereditary disease called retinitis pigmentosa. How you been, Delvin? There's been nothing medical science can do to stop the decay of his retinas. Give me a couple of three sugar. Right in front of you. Oh, it's here? Okay. Real stuff. Is that real no, stuff? Oh, he's, he's, he's not telling you, right? Dalvin, let me tell you. <laughs> Did you uh, have the white stuff. I'll there have we the go. white stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is the bad stuff. They have it anyway. Well, you know that stuff. Oh, okay. To realize that I was going to lose my sight, the hardest thing was to give up driving. I knew I was going to have to, and I did. And I'd done it by my own choice. I, uh, I didn't want to have an accident and hurt someone. Is that, that really concerned me. And so one day I decided that this was far enough and I knew that I'd have to accept it. And it was very hard to do. Still too high. I know I, know I ain't got such a high flame, see. Then I'll go ahead and put my pan on. Then I know I don't have a real hot flame. Adapting to blindness requires a major overhaul of one's life. Most things have to be done by touch. Simple tasks can become difficult. But for Delvin, having to quit driving was the cruelest of blows. He drove a truck for a living and was forced to retire early. Bud, no. But automobiles remained his passion. Yeah, you gotta move a little bit, boss. I don't need your help. It takes Delvin a little longer, but he can still fix a motor. Yeah, I gotta be careful when I lay my tools down around. I gotta remember where they're at. <laughs> These valve covers here, there's four bolts in them, there's two on each side. On the intake manifold, there's uh, six bolts on each side. There's two here in the back, two here in the center, and two up here at the front. I know where everything is. I know what size they are by the feel of them. Like the, the bolts that hold the valve covers down, they're 7 sixteenths. And the bolts that hold the intake down are 9 sixteenths. They're not real hard to work on. It's just getting it apart, getting it cleaned up, and being careful when you go to put it back together. This all has to come apart. It's dirty. <laughs> While he does get on with life, of course, Delvin wants more than anything to see again. His only hope is if someone can work out how to repair or replace his retinas. How are you doing? Mm. Hi, Al. Okay. These are the um, ASR implants. It is the stuff of science fiction. But in a lab in Chicago, not far from Delvin's home, two men carry his hope. Pixels are well defined. Okay. Take a look at the uh, implants. Oh, wow, that looks good. Brothers Alan and Vincent Chow have invented what could be the beginnings of a bionic eye. Looks beautiful. The Chows have spent 10 years and millions of dollars developing a minute silicon chip. On a penny, it's almost insignificant, but its potential worth in the treatment of retinal blindness could be enormous. This device is based on a silicon chip similar to computer chips. Uh, embedded on its surface are thousands of microscopic solar cells, which we call microphotodiodes. And the purpose is to stimulate the remaining cells in a pattern which resembles the images falling upon them. This, this looks great. I mean, how smooth mm -hmm. those edges. Mm -hmm. If we insert this into the retina, we should be able to see the implant glide very easily over the retinal surface. Alan you and Vincent Chow are trying to make the first working artificial retina. It should be very good. The problem that we've had before 
uh, obviously was when you hit sharp edges. They're the perfect team. Alan is an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor and surgeon. Vincent is an electrical engineer. Their idea to try and make an artificial retina came in 1988 at the dinner table. Over Thanksgiving dinner, we have a habit of talking about many of the different subject matters, and as usual, he uh, brought up the issue that um, a boy that he was seeing, he felt very, very discouraged that he could not do anything for him because he was going blind from a, a case of RP uh, degeneration. And I started asking him different questions on the mechanisms uh, of, of sight and, and the retina, and it turned out in my mind that uh, there might be a fit where an electronical device, like a, um, a solar cell based structure, might be able to replicate some of the firing signals that occur in a normal retina. It could be said that it was only a matter of time before the Chow brothers would team up for a project like building an artificial eye. Even their hobbies involve developing the ideas and skills they'll need to make their prototype silicon retina work. Uh, I've always had an interest in amateur astronomy. In fact, this is probably what uh, got my interest into optics uh, many years ago. And uh, the relationship between astronomy and ophthalmology is pretty obvious. Uh, both utilize optics, uh, both uh, look into uh, how to get the most amount of light into your photoreceptors as possible. All right, go ahead, take a look. Take a look. All right, do you see the moon there? Yeah. Is it pretty bright? While Alan is inspired by the wonders and the mysteries of light, Vincent has always been interested in making things. Right now, with his mechanic, he's overhauling a perfectly good Corvette not to make it go faster, but to make it drive better. Uh, well, this car actually was totally disassembled. Every nut and bolt, it was just totally disassembled. Uh, Vincent had taken it apart and, and tagged each and every part that was on it and painted and cleaned every component. He's, you know, very organized, very meticulous, very uh, methodical about the way he does things. And again, everything's got to be top shelf, and that's the best person to work with. You know, it's not, oh, gee, do you think we can save this, or should we, you know, try to fudge that? None of that. What I like about it is that a lot of this knowledge is just not applicable to a car. It's applicable to many things that you do, and it helps me a lot to pull together thoughts and create solutions for other problems that I have. OK, let's see if we can move this back again a little bit more. OK, here it comes. Well, this is actually what it's like to be an astronomer, because you're always fighting the clouds, <laughs> all right? Here, let's, let's set it back up. OK, Vincent, I wanted to show you where that boost line is attached. Okay. Uh, we've tied the, the boost line in right here, and that's this line right, going right here right. the manifold. Mm -hmm. Let me adjust it real quick, quick. Okay. All right, OK, all right, OK, all right, here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, All right, go, all right. Go, 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 go. OK, go, go. Oh. OK, take a look. Oh, there it goes. All right. Wow. Scott was cooperative today. Did you, did you that when the Chow brothers sat down to dinner back in 1988, it was their combined desire to solve problems that led to talk of making an artificial retina. You can move it like this. Ah, good color, excellent. I like this. Very nice. It looks good. It looks very good. Yes, I like it. This uh, tweak in the process looks extremely encouraging. That Thanksgiving Day conversation has resulted in the development of a whole new branch of silicon chip science. On this wafer, you can see I have eight circular impressions in here that will eventually be fabricated and turned into an implant. Each one would be our artificial silicon retina. These tiny dots represent the hopes of millions of people across the world with retinal blindness. Only a powerful microscope will reveal their extraordinary design. Let's go take a look under a microscope. That's yeah, fantastic. I have the new objective yeah. set up here so we can take a good look at it. Back at the silicon chip lab in Chicago, Vincent Chow is making the wafer which could change the way we treat many forms of retinal blindness. Pattern looks good. Yeah, it looks excellent. 
This is a pattern of the final pixel shape that will eventually hold our electrode patterns. It's a kind of blueprint for a new type of silicon chip, which could be the first working artificial retina. The squares are microscopic solar cells, arranged like pixels on a TV screen. The circular chip holds a staggering three and a half thousand solar cells. When light hits the chip, each cell emits an electric current. It's close to the limits of what we can do with silicon and solar cell technology. But even this chip's design pales in comparison to the biological device it's intended to repair, the human retina. A true wonder of engineering. Are you okay? It's kind of bright, I know, I'm sorry. How Delvin Jones' cool. retinas are normal in every way, except one. Here we go, we're gonna be a flash. The black and brown patches are the problem. They are dead cells from a crucial layer deep inside the retina. A healthy retina looks like this, no broken down layers. When it's working properly, the retina processes light in a strikingly complex manner which is not fully understood. What we do know is that when light strikes the retina, it activates cells called photoreceptors, which look like a collection of rods and cones. The photoreceptors emit electric signals which are fed to the brain by the optic nerve. In Delvin's eyes, the rods and cones do not work. The Chow Brothers chip is intended to mimic the photoreceptors by converting light into electric signals. When the retina lays on top of the implant, then the remaining cells are in contact with the electrodes of these microscopic solar cells. So now when light enters through the retina and stimulates these microscopic solar cells, the electrical signal that's produced by these tiny photocells stimulate the remaining uh, cells that are uh, still there. This is what's called an electroretinogram in the visual evoked potential. And the purpose of this is to determine uh, what is the level of function of the retina. Dr. And, Chow's uh, artificial retina is retina still itself. highly experimental. So Delvin uh, Jones is being tested for suitability to join nine other side. patients who will fine. receive an implant uh, in the first formal second. trial. Yeah, okay. And then we'll determine what kind of electrical activity uh, the retina is able to produce. Even though some people already have the chip in their eyes, the U.S. Food and Drug Authority is overseeing the program. And in these early days, Dr. Chow is restricted from saying if the chip works. Okay. What we'll do now is we'll turn out the lights so that you can dark adapt. Uh, what we can say is that we have been successfully able to implant this chip. And so far up to this point, uh, we've seen no evidence of infection, no inflammation. There has been no rejection no erosion of the chip outside of the retina, which is something that was a, very, a prime consideration for us. And the chips are functioning electrically. What we're seeing now is the electrical activity of the eye to a flash of light. And basically, one can see that there's very little activity in the eye. That was just a muscle twitch. But that's consistent with the diagnosis of retinitis pigmentosa. Okay. What? actually causes it. Uh, the flatness just indicates that the retinal cells are not responding to light okay. as they should, which is why you're having trouble seeing. Okay. Delvin Jones' greatest hope is that he will join the test program. Okay, tell me when you can see my fingers. Right. How many fingers? Okay, I see them. How many fingers? Uh, three. If he's selected, he'll be the yeah. fourth patient in the trial. I think there's two. The there's operation will be difficult. All right. Dr. Chow will remove all the liquid gel inside the eye. Then, he'll carefully separate the micro-thin layers of Delvin's retina. We lift up the retina with a salt solution to allow a pocket to form, and then the chip is placed into this pocket, like putting a coin into a pocket. And then the retina is laid flat upon the chip yeah, using air, actually. Uh, within several days, the air gets reabsorbed, and the uh, fluid within the eye reforms. Ultimately, we are hoping to restore some level of vision, just even some level of vision, to those patients who have uh, lost so much. To be able to 
have something like this done, and even if it don't work, if it will help someone else down the road, uh, to me it's worth it, because I see nothing now, and if, it, if they can do something, it would be wonderful. If I can't, at least we'd give it a good shot, and if it'll help someone else, it's well worth it. Uh, that's how I feel.